Hello everybody, um, another video, another week, here we go again, I <laughs> uh, thought you lot would have been fed up with me by now, anyway thanks again for everybody who's been watching, uh, warm welcome again to uh, every, you know all the new subscribers, um, before I give a few mentions, like, like I always do, I always give a few mentions you know to people who's you know written in comments or, or left comments underneath here. Um, Jake Spicer, Jeff Baker, Paul Robinson, yeah again, uh, John Moore, Glyn Stimson, Randy from RDK Metal Melter, he liked the um, liked the last video, uh, Brian Thornton, Steve Holden, Jeff Reck, Greg Spinks, the Scale Model Car Guy channel, um, and of course my old mate Brian from Thailand, Brian Stubbers. Always on about me air. I've cut it again, but I haven't done this bit, Brian. Sorry, mate. Anyway, got a nice comment here from um, Nick from Jersey. Um, crap old Nick. I don't know if you've ever watched any of his stuff. About the um, Impala video I did quite a while back. He said, um, he said I thought I watched all your videos, Bob, but I missed this one. Tell you what, when you chose the colours for the, um, you know, when I was going to paint it, said I was going to paint it pink, he thought, bloody hell. <laughs> But when he saw where it turned out, whoa, you know, because I've done the old cream, didn't I, the two-tone. So, um, anyway, absolutely stunning, he says. Definitely going to have to look for one of those on eBay to do, and in the same colours. So watch out for that, see how he gets on with this. See if he manages to do it without breaking the post like I did. <laughs> He's, um, he was quite impressed with that. He's a great tip on repairing the post. Might need to do that on a kennel club in Palo. He's, well, he's obviously had, he, he's done it already. He's already broke the post. So there you go. You can you can fix your post like that, um, Nick. Um, I made a cock up again. He says, <laughs> "You did a pretty real job. Love it." Um, another another lovely job on the jag and the bulldozer as well. You like that video? Really like the old bulldozer. A bit fiddly though. Yeah, they are fiddly when you're going to put them back together. It's like taking them apart. It's, it's trying to stretch the old, you know, tracks over and try and get the bloody wheels in it. Pain in the backside it is sometimes. But you know, once you've done it, you've done it. Um, <clears throat> he's he's got a, a Jaguar, got a couple of them, I think he says um, that he bought when he was on holiday. So he's um, appreciate the um, video for that because he wanted, you know, he wanted a little bit of an insight how to do the jack. So anyway, thanks, Nick. You know, that's all right. You know, I'm here to help anytime, mate. Mark D of CRC Racing, good ones, Bob. The color suits the jack turned out great. I thought I'd do it that color. I mean, one of you. I, I'll probably come across it in a minute. Um, one of, would have thought the, the actual blue I used for the bulldozer would be a better colour than what I did, because the colour I used for it was like a grey dull colour. But I thought it would be more to the period, like you know. So that's the reason why I've done it that way round. He um, enjoyed the tractor. Nice, nice sendings from Scott and Rob. Cheers, Ian. Ian Hulley. Hi Bob. Two more say from the scrappers bulldozer. Bulldozer looks better with Fred. <laughs> he sent me Fred in scenes with a load of bits, parts, and all that. And the tracks. Glad the paint came out okay on the Jag. Looks. Oh yeah, he, he says it looks quite a period colour. Happy to help as always. Nice to see a very mix of models. Top work as usual. Best regards to you. Cheers, mate. Um, John Davy. Hi Bob. Come on, mate. You know you don't need an need a air brush. <laughs> Airbrush. Never mind. Yeah. All right, John. Alan Saxton. Um, good day, Bob. Two very nice restrooms as per usual. I've noticed that when you shake the spray cans, they make the same noise as my missus. <laughs> when she's shaking her head to say no. <laughs> rattle, rattle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get the same noise from my missus when she says no. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Keep up the good work and see you next week. Tommy flying out. <clears throat> Another lovely set of restorations, Bob. I loved it when you said you were not too bothered about the bulldozer. Um, and then, then I proceeded to knock out another first-class restoration. The colours work well together. I think the colour on the Jag is very nice indeed. Paint does look thick. It was thick when I sprayed it on. I, I thought it was coming, you know, going to come out really crap. But you know, sh paint does shrink back after a while. So I was lucky with that one. Um, the paint looks look looks thick as as 
Corgi did them that way back in the day. Keep up the good work. Brilliant. Look forward to Friday. See what you do next. Well, it's Friday night. <laughs> Video day. <laughs> Matchbox Garage. Lovely job on the tractor, Bob. I knew I was sending it on to someone that could do it justice. Rob. That's all right, Rob. Thanks. Thanks for sending it to me, mate. I'll try and get on with the other ones, you know, sometime. But I've got so many you must know that it's like you don't know what to what to go for first. <laughs> so I'm trying to like stretch them all out a bit different ones. Um Opa Scott from Opa's Diecast Restorations. Those two diecasts turned out beautiful, my friend, especially that Jag. It sure looked a lot better than when I sent it to you. <laughs> Thanks for the show, Bob, appreciate it very much. That's alright, Scott, no worries mate. You do great work. I like I like watching your channel, it's so you know laid back, easy going. Isn't it? Ian Bradnick. Another great job, Bob. Um, the driver has the cleanest overalls I've ever seen. He needs a cupper to dirty him. <laughs> the yellow went on great. All the best. Watch again soon, Ian and family. Cheers, Ian. No worries, mate. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff, what am I about? Jerry Bailey. Really nice job on them both, Bob. I think it would have, I would have swapped the colours. Ah, yeah, this is this is the chap. He's, he thought I would have been better painting the Jag, the bulldozer colour, like it, because it's a bit of more of a you know, like a metallic blue, or they look better, he reckons. I think I would have swapped the, the colours around myself and used the blue grey on the bulldozer and that dark midnight blue on the jack, just a personal preference. But they both look fantastic. Um, the Fokker 03. Hi, <laughs> Bob. Nice to see another Mark 10 jack. I have, I have two, a Corgi 238 like this one and a spot on 218, both of which will eventually have genuine jaguar factory colors the paint you use was high coat more used more often used on engine parts and brakes i don't care <laughs> it works <laughs> now nah, i know you're only messing around mate um yeah doesn't matter it's it, as long as it does the job mate that's all that matters um american english autos yay bob is back sat here in the office with a pot noodle <laughs> Don't you, Emily Lot got nothing better to do than watch an idiot like me? <laughs> After spending all morning trawling through real Jags for sale, and Bob is restoring a Jag. Brilliant, made my day. <laughs> Stay safe, Bob. You too, mate. Um, Paul Power, Biscuit Man. Nice one, Bob. Um, chuckle here as I watched you with the tracks on the bulldozer. <laughs> Tea and biscuits are the norm here on all your videos. We await the next one. You make my day. He's laughing when I was trying to get the bloody tracks back on as well. Martin. Martin Dare. Nice one, Bob. Good colour on the jag. What did you use to round the flat end of the tractor axle so you could pull it out? Ah, yeah. Well, as I said, Mark, I did reply in, you know, in the comments. Well, a lot of brute force and um, pair of pliers and me and my voice that's all I could use and I kept squeezing it in the voice and messing around until I got it flat enough to pull it through and then well I haven't sort of squashed it back the other way yet because I was hoping to get the proper tracks for it but whether that ever happened I don't know so I might just leave it like it is for now because the actual tension's keeping it all together anyway so but yeah just brute force and ignorance really mate that's what I'm say, mate um Mike Thatcher Nice restoration, Bob. Love that paint colour. Your usual high standard. Great viewing. Cheers, Mike. Robert Garrett. Hi, Bob. You should have your own museum. <laughs> With the fantastic collection of die-cast models you have. <laughs> I ain't got enough for a museum. Man. There's people with a lot more than me. I tell you, they got them all around there. You know, they got proper rooms of shells everywhere and loot, thousands, you know, loads of them. Like, you know, but I, I ain't got nothing like that. I've only got a few, I ain't got that many like that. Um, Keith Edmonds. Um, nice job on the Jag Bulldozer. Doing two models at a time, very good. Interesting colour on the Jag. Looks good. Nice shine, excellent channel, Bob. Long may you continue and get... Oh, you can get a spring-loaded punch off eBay, you know, for the rivets. I did buy one. I've got it here somewhere. There, there it is. I did buy one. It's a load of crap. I, I bought rubbish, I think, because it doesn't it doesn't really do now. You shouldn't be able to do that with your finger, should you? You should go through your finger. It's rubbish. 
I'd have to try and get hold of a decent one somewhere because that one doesn't do it doesn't pop you know like it's supposed to when you bang it well you're not supposed to bang it you're supposed to push it and it and it goes boom, and it fuds it doesn't it but that one doesn't it's rubbish it's just total. I took it to pieces I tried everything with it but uh, it's just a bloody paperweight <laughs> um Shez or Shay Snellez you don't have oh because I was on about the amount of subscribers I got because somebody said about I'm the best channel on YouTube and I, I said well in the, la yeah, in the last um, introduction I said well I'd go and buy the subscriber man. there is you know other people's got like thousands like 30k plus but that's, well, might, I might get there one day it'd be nice but I don't want you lot thinking that I don't appreciate you lot I mean she says um, you don't have too few subscribers like like Spinal Tap you play to a more select audience yeah that's that's what I think too I, you know I don't have rabble on my channel I, I got all the best people my subscribers are all the best I said I know what you mean Matt Pedwell don't forget your subscribers are quality I know and don't worry about piss <laughs> piss fin quality quantity is there any chance you can show in detail how you apply the chrome paint to grills and bumpers etc I wouldn't know wouldn't know where to start well if you look at me um, a few videos back I've done a dinky Bedford van I've done two of them in one video and um, I also also done a bit showing the bait our prints the decals on that one but on that video if you look on that it's about halfway through I think when I'm, I think it's a, a, after I sprayed them up it's just after that bit I'm, I shows you how I paint the actual chrome on because I don't use it with the Molotov pen I paint it you know I gets a bit in the nib and puts me, me brush in the in the nib and uses a little fine brush to do it with but if you watch that bed for a dinky van video then you'll see how, you know I shows it in that so I mean I, that's why I am bothered doing it all over again because I mean I've already done it before I mean it's not rocket science I mean it's just just a little fine brush in the nib of the pen you just get a little bit a blob of it and turn turn the pen upside down I just hold it in the vice and then just paint it that way but that's how I do it so if you look at that mat then that will um, sort you out but anyway that's it for um, another load of chatter and chair chatter and yap and dribble for this week this <laughs> Let's get on with this video, and um, this this week it's the um, the Captain Scarlet, um, what's it, Spectrum Patrol car? That's the one, the red one. This Martin done it a few weeks back because I I asked him what colour he used for his because I did do one previous to this one before I've done YouTube. I've done one a few years back, which is in me um, collection now. But I came across another one, so um, I like the colour it's come out. So. I got the colour from him actually to spray it. So um, anyway, that's that's enough of the old chit chat for this week. Um, let's get on with the video, and um, I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. But from me, bye bye for now. Okay, this is um, this is the one we're going to do today. This one here, I found this one in a toy fair. The, uh, well, not a toy fair. The, the antiques and collectibles collectibles fair and um, I, only, I only give a couple of quid for this one I was quite pleased with it really because there's nothing broke on it the only thing missing was the area on the top but I've, I've got a new one today from flowers um, I've stuck it in the top just to show you what it's supposed to look like but yeah this one's not too bad at all there's a few chips on it but all the glass looks pretty good and the, the interior is all there so really it just needs a bit of a spruce up. I'm going to try and save the actual decals. I have got some more what I printed. But I will try and save these decals if I can. I'll try and get them off somehow. And um, stick them back on. But anyway let's um, get on with this one. Okay for for the first um, job of this thing. Start dismantling. So we'll take the area away. I think I'm going to have to paint that. I'm not sure what colour they're meant to be, these white. I'll have to look at the picture. I'm pretty sure they're meant to be grey. So I might have to actually paint that to the proper colour. Or silver or whatever it's meant to be. Um, 
<clears throat> right, dismantling. Pretty easy with this one, as you can see. No rivets to worry about in this one. Just get the old screwdriver. And it's just a simple screwdriver job on this one. Keep that screw, you don't lose that one. And that's it, it just pops out like that. Quite simple. As you in, look at the interior of that. I am not I've not had this open, I swear. Look how clean that is. I don't think that needs touching up at all, does it? I have got a little brush here. Give it a little dust out like that. There, that's it, finished. Clean that, that's all right. <laughs> don't need to do any more of that. That is totally clean. The screen just pops out. I think this screen's in pretty good nick as well. Put that back there. Yeah, it just needs a bit of a clean up. There's no, there's no um, marks or anything there. There's a, well, there's a bit of polishing needed there, as you can see. That needs cleaning there, that. But, no, that's a nice piece of glass there. We should better bring that up like new. So that's a well picked out little um, model. And I want to try and get these off. Now what I'm going to have to do with this, I think I'm going to have to try and get my knife in here. If I can get under one of these stickers, I might be able to gradually work it off. But I don't want to go tearing it. So I've got to be careful with this. I think I'm moving the camera more than anything else. I mean, if, if it's too difficult, then um, I'm going to just have to put me um, copied ones on. I'll cut around that bit. Once you get one end going, you should be able to just get your blade under there. See, I'm not sure if that's actually part of the sticker or whether that's the paint. That looks like the paint there, actually. But this is the most fiddly part. I mean, if it's going to be a paint, I shan't bother, but... I'm going to have a go in a minute. I wonder if I can get a pin under there. I've got a little pin here. That might start it off. It's got to be something very small. I'm using the wrong end for a star. It doesn't want to come off, folks. I mean, I'm going to have to put my Reaper ones on here. Yeah, it's, done, it's, it's really there. Nah, it's really ground on there, that. That ain't going anywhere, is it? That ain't going anywhere, that one. I think that's there for good. It's all going brittle anyway, that. Yeah, there, that. It's not even a sticker, it's a, a bloody... I nearly swore, then. It's a transfer, that. It's a decal. It's not a sticker. Usually these are stickers. But on this one, it's got a decal, that. So it's just chipping away, it's not doing anything. So that... Well, that's that idea right away, then. Pity really, because they was they would have been a nice couple of stickers, but never mind. We can get around that. I have got some more. Now this is supposed to make a noise. I don't know if that's it. I suppose it is. Now, this is going to be awkward to um, strip. All I'm going to do is wire wheel this bit in the front. These here, I'm going to just take these tires off, and I'm going to put the old wheel on there and polish them. Tires can be cleaned because they're not in bad neck. They're pretty good tires actually. They're nice and nice and flexible. They're not they're not hard and brittle or anything. So they only need a clean up. Let's get them off like that. Now this bit I can take this out to clean it if I want to because that will pop out. That you see saying that <laughs> it will pop out believe me 
there is a way error codes you just snap them out it's pretty much the same as the um <clears throat> what do you call it the security maximum security vehicle but you can take take both sets of wheels out of that one and to get them back in all i've got to do is just prize that up slightly get one side in and do the same with the other just prize it up with a screwdriver just go like that but prize it up and rock it down over on the on the pins and just call it that rock it underneath like that but I don't want to put it back in there and struggle in the end with that now this bottom piece I think what I'll do is give that a really good I'm not going to strip the paint on that I'm going to rough this up because this paint is pretty much pretty tough so what I'm going to do is rough all this paint up I'm going to mask these bits off bit of tape over over that piece and mask these wheels off and then spray that again with another white and it, it didn't really spray very good actually because you can see the grey underneath so when it was done in the factory it was a pretty crap job really for a factory because that should be pure white so anyway that's that's just going to be roughed up I'm not going to strip this because we got all this McGubbins here and you know I mean to, to strip that it's going to be is that supposed to connect down there? I don't know. So it doesn't make that good a noise. It's point, pretty pointless, pointless apparatus, actually. I think that. I don't see why that's there, really. It's pretty pointless. But anyway, this is all we're going to strip. We're going to strip the top half. And um, thanks to um, Martin Dare, <clears throat> he has actually done one of these. I've done one before, but thanks to him, he has got one hell of a colour for this, which is pretty close to the original. And it's called, I did, I did uh, message him to ask him, and this is the only one I could get, Four Tangle Red, that's, that's the colour. He had a high coat one, he had, he had the cheap cans. I, had, I ended up paying seven and a half quid for this down Bloody Alfred's. I never buy paint in there, but I needed it for this one here. So this here is just going to be used for these. I mean, looking at the colour there, it's pretty close like that, but you can't always go by that. It never looks exactly the same as what it shows on the can. When it's sprayed, it looks nearer this colour. Yeah, I asked him about the colour of the... Of the um, you know what one to use and i i ended up having to go to alfred's to get it so that's our color four tangle red is the one to use for the old spectrum patrol car so that's what we're going to do now we're going to get this one stripped off now in the old caustic soda and um get it all polished up let's get on and do that okay i pulled the kettle i'm just hoping the jar is going to be okay i'm in robin matchbox garage he uses one of these um, jars and he's has been all right so this is a new way for me to do it actually I haven't done it this way very much but it seems to make sense it's a lot easier to clean up so let's put a bit of um, a bit of the old magic beans in there get this baby stripped cooking away there the old paint's getting looser as we speak it's gradually coming off yeah it's working I'm just going to leave it there that's enough of the old caustic soda in there so I'm just going to leave that and let that one bubble away for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back and um, by that time I'll have had it all out and um, we'll start polishing it up. Right then folks, and I, I'll tell you something now, this is how it actually came out of that jar. Nothing, nothing on it. I let it soak, I went in for five minutes in, indoors 
and I came back out, took it out of the jar, just, you know, I've just thrown all the actual mix away now, but look, this is it, it's come out, nothing on it at all, totally clean, with paint, and you tell me, any paint stripper, that can give you a finish, like that, that's why I always insist on caustic soda, you just chuck it all right, and that's what you end up with, no messing around, picking out bits here and there with, you know, wiping all that gooey old, dirty old paint stripper off. That's what you end up with, look. Virtually clean. Good stuff. Right. I've got my, um, Dremel. I'm going to give it a bit of a polish now. I doubt I'll show you all of this, because it's not going to be a quick job. a good little polish all over and it's taken me quite a while to do the whole lot I don't want to waste waste your viewing time watching me do this I'll just do the top just to let you see how it comes out do them bits in there do that little side bit Shall we get carried away with these things right let's have a look for now. There, look at that. You can almost see your face in it. So I'm going to get the rest of this done and then um, I'll give it an undercoat. I should have red undercoat really for this for this paint but I haven't got any so I'm going to just use me just use me normal grey. I'll give it an undercoat and then we'll get back and we'll um, give it a spray up and then um, we'll start working on the um, base plate. I might probably try this brush on the base plate like it is actually, just to rough it up <coughs> before I spray that. But anyway, I'm going to get on that off the camera and when you see it, well, like you say, it'll be a few seconds for you. But for me, you know, it's going to be a darn sight longer. Okay, folks. I've um, polished it all up, as you can see. Looks a lot better. Looks like a brand new one again. Well... Not quite, like brand new in the factory, I suppose, because it's all nice and cleaned up. And the base plate, all I've done is rough this up. Some of the paint's sort of come off, but I've just masked up the wheels, and I've also polished them wheels before I've painted this and masked them up. I've polished the other set as well, the front ones. I'll show you them. They've come up pretty good. And there they are. They're all polished up with the um, Dremel, so that's all sorted out. So now I'm going to give this a bit of grey undercoat. I might give this a white undercoat, actually, this base plate, because there's white going on there. So I'm going to help the gloss white then. So I know a lot of people say if you're giving it a white paint, gloss paint, you use grey undercoat. Well, I don't. I use the white undercoat because it fills a lot of the gaps that the gloss done and I mean if you if you can't see where you've sprayed I think you need a pair of glasses you know they say that it's so you can see where you've sprayed but I mean I don't think anybody could be that daft not to know where they sprayed I don't have no problems with that I use this white and then I use this white gloss on top I know I know where I've sprayed I'm not that daft I know I'm not the best of eyesight but I'm not that stupid so that's how I do it. Up to you how you do it. So I'm going to give this undergo now, and then we'll be back. <clears throat> right, next job. This stuff. We need to um, do the screen. And I'm going to use my Dremel for that. Give it a quick polish, and then we'll be dipping that in our special um, our pledge. But these tires, in the meantime, I'm going to put them in my cleaning 
fluid, my mixture of vinegar and what else is it? Oh, I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff in there. There's um, that old surface cleaner and alcohol, vinegar. <laughs> you name it, it's in there. It's a royal mixture. But it works anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, let's get on and give this screen a bit of a clean up. Just get a little bit on the edge of the actual brush here. It should be enough to um, do all of this. So I owe that bit. I'll rub it. Rub it in to start with like this. And this will get all the all the crap off. And if there's any other bits that I need doing. If there's any um like scratches I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna have to get the old sandpaper out for that and give it a bit of a sand. No doubt you've seen them. Um, Seen that being done before. Martin Derry's done it before. Don't be afraid of it, but don't go, like he says, don't go stupid. <laughs> You've got to use a very fine, fine grit sandpaper to do it, or emery paper. Because if you do it with a tough grit, you're going to scratch it and it'll ruin it. So let's get on and give this a bit of a polish and see what we got at the end. Might not need sanding. I mean, sometimes it's all right, but you can get the scratches out with this. But if they're too deep, you can. I'll give it a quick going over with this. Don't have this going too fast, folks, because otherwise you're likely to burn the plastic and then you will actually ruin it so do it do it quickly be very quick when you when you actually go over it especially these bits and you should be alright like I say once it's dipped in the pledge if you've got most of it off with this this process then you're well you're laughing because the pledge will make it even more shinier yeah this screen here ain't ain't too bad so i reckon that's going to do it for that one I'll do a quick go on the inside i might do a few bits in there Give it a quick going over on the inside, and then we'll um, we'll wipe that off with a cloth and see what we've ended up with. Nice clean cloth. Well, folks, I don't know what happened there, but I was actually filming myself, or filming this, wiping this, and polishing this up. And for some reason, my microphone is not switched. Well, the camera is switched on through the microphone socket for some reason. I've got the mic microphone in there. So I don't know what happened there. It's in the thing for the microphone and it switched itself off, the camera. So, well, as, as you know, <laughs> these things happen. I was a bit pissed off with that, but anyway. That's what we've ended up with. That's all I've been doing. It's just nice clean cloth and I polished it up. And that's what we've come up with now. A nice clean screen. So we'll be um we'll be dipping that now in our pledge. I'll get the old cloth out of the way. I'll get me old thing of jig. My screen sanctuary. Get the pledge. And we'll give that a nice, nice dip. Get the old tweezers. Now, who's I going to do this? I think I'll, I'll go for the back. I 
have to total them up a bit. And there you go. Let's let the excess drip off, because otherwise, if we don't let this drip off, you're going to get a blob of bloody um, pledge on the end, you know what I mean? You're just going to see a big blob. Not bob, blob. <laughs> so, just shake off the excess. Just check it over and make sure you've covered everything. Oh, it's a bit crappy on the side, so I'm going to have to do it again. That's not too bad. And then we stick it in our um, thing, like that. I'll move that out of the way. Put that in my little um, coastal packet would be lid and that's where I leave it leave it in there now for 24 hours and let that cure and then that'll be um, all set to put back on the car there's no dust going to be able to get on it and I'll stick it up out of the way all the dust to be kept off of it because it's in my little coastal packet and the next job we're ready is just clean up these wheels and um, then we're going to spray the um, spray the body of the car in the bottom I've already given it under coat as you know I said I was going to do that off camera which I have so let's put this away and we'll, um, we'll clean these wheels up in a minute I'll, you don't want to see me do that it's only in my mixture and the next bit will be um, spraying up so we'll um, come back on that now. Okay, first of all, we'll give the old base plate a bit of a gloss white because I've already undercoated it, as you can see. I, I did tell you I didn't completely strip this. I just rubbed it down because the paint that was on it was pretty solid on there. So I didn't think it needed to be, you know totally stripped and plus we had all the McGubbins and all that stuff inside of it so it was easy to put it this way really now that's not too bad I've masked up all the um, the rest of it so yeah that's okay right the next bit let's get on and do the show now so as you can see the show is a nice bit of undercoat on it, grey undercoat, and it's not looking too bad. Let's give it the old tangle metallic red and see. Oh, this comes out. bad red at all this for the old Captain Scarlet car thanks to Mr. Martin Dare for finding this colour Shouldn't be too bad at all. I thought I had a good colour for this, but it was slightly too dark. But this one is a bit nearer. It's a, it's a slightly lighter finish. So, yeah, that's not looking too bad. So we'll let all this dry. And then we'll um, go to, um, well... Reassembly, really, that's about it. And we'll see what it looks like. Okay, folks, here's my transfers. I'm hoping these are going okay because um, it's a red background. 
I think I've printed these on white paper, so they should go on white. I've got a punch here. So this should be able to cut right around these perfectly. And you've got like a little O there, like you can see where you line it up. So let's have a go at this. It's quite awkward sometimes to do this. Especially when you're trying to do it on camera. <laughs> I want to let, let you lot see. Right, I need to bang that now with, with a hammer. And there you go. Push that through. Or use the end of a there we go. I haven't quite got it dead on. I think the O's a bit I'm gonna have to trim that piece off. If you look at that, it's not quite dead on. Because I think this is a bigger punch than what I need actually. But you know. At least it's given me a start. Like that. And you push that through with the old. It gives you a perfect circle. It's ideal for doing numbers if you get one of these. Get one of these punch things. It's ideal for, you know, if you've got any numbers you want to um, put on the sides of cars and stuff. It gives you a perfect circle. But like I said, this. The circle for these ears is slightly too big for the numbers. It's all, it's all right. It works perfect. So I've done it before. But for these ear, these are slightly smaller than the actual numbers. But there's there, there's the imprint on the desk. <laughs> so it's pretty sharp. So anyway, I'll trim these up, and then we'll get our um, Captain Scarlet Pursuit vehicle ready for these ear. And then all I've got to do is give it a nice, good lacquering over and. That's another job done. Okay, so um, we've got this all sprayed up. It's got a nice um, pearlescent effect. So what we're going to do now, I thought these here were um, decals, but they're not. They're actually done on very thin photo paper. I thought I'd, I thought I'd done them as decals, but I didn't. So anyway, that's even better. I put me 3M's double-sided tape on the back. So I'm going to um, stick these on. Let's get the old blade in there, just so we can get the old tape off. Because I did say I was worried about them um, being on the decal paper because it might show through the colour, you know. But with this stuff, seeing it's a sticker, it ain't going to show through. So I'll stick the old stickers on. And get the blade off. Come on. Get them stuck on there before I um, seal it with the lacquer as such. That's not bad. I'm sorry if I was out of shot there. But there you go. It's not too bad. It's looking pretty good. And I'll lacquer over that, you see. There's one of them. Because you have got the little recesses on the doors for these um, stickers. Let's get this one off. This 3M's double sided tape is really good stuff. And we'll get that one lined up. So he's, the S is. If you look at this sticker, it's, it's an S. The spectrum, so you've got to put them on the proper way up, really. Get the 
play day if I can. Come on. I see. It's ever so sticky, this 3M's. Just try and maneuver it into place. And there we go. Yeah, if you look at that, it's an S. I don't know if you can see that. It's like an S, like you see. There's the S. So you've got to put them on the right way up, really. So that's ready now for a cup of lacquer. And then we'll be ready to put all this back together, all this stuff. So I'm going to carry on and give this a flash over. And then we'll come back and put it all together. Well, everybody, um, <clears throat> we've got everything all painted up now. I've got the wheels back on. They're all polished. I'm not worried about the old paint on that, because that ain't going to show. And um, that's all been sprayed up nicely now, as you can see. It's come out of the way, actually, with the old... Just masking it off and giving it a rough up. There's the glass. Crystal. I've um, got the decals, they're all, this has all been um, lacquered now with the decals, I've put the silver bits on the front. And um, it's just ready now to go back together. So I'm going to do that. <coughs> I'm going to put the use in there, it comes apart, so I ain't going to bother boring you with that. I'll put the aerial in that. I've noticed the aerial is white on most of these models, so I've left it white. So there's that. All ready to go back together now. Next time we see it, we'll we'll see it on the old turntable before and after. <laughs> 